Uh, how are we feeling about Colorado? That Louis bag in the portal is mm, pretty open. Up there. Dylan Edwards just bounced. Yeah, I tell you what, though, they've actually had a pretty good last like 72 hours, right? Since yep. all this, yep. you know, this this thing uh, started going the other way on them. Um, the question you have to ask yourself is, is what's coming in the door better than what went out the door? Because if it's equal You're and not better, the result is not going to change. Yeah. And so we can't. When it comes to Colorado, we, we've got to acknowledge and be very honest about the fact that they created this turnstile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the turnstile they're finding out goes both ways. Yeah. It spins to the right and it spins to the left. Mm -hmm. So you have to accept the reality that if this is what you created, then you don't get to only have it one way. Yeah. And that's what's happening at Colorado right now. And, and I listen, um, I've, and I've said this, I said this going back last August when I took a bunch of heat for it. You did. We need to stop focusing on Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, and Shiloh Sanders. And start focusing, if we're going to have this discussion about whether Colorado is any good or not, focus on who all the other guys are. Yeah. Because that's what got them into this problem. And I'll tell you this, guys. They are very, very fortunate that the NCAA or the court system or whatever decided to allow a second penalty-free transfer. Because mm -hmm. if they hadn't, they would be stuck with all of those guys yeah. that they brought in last year. So in a way, this could help them if the replenishments are better than what's mm -hmm. going out the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, to me, it comes down, and, and any person that understands football, and everybody here does, and, and most of our audience does, I'm, not, I'm looking at what you have up front, right? Exactly. People ask me, Jake, what does Auburn have to do? What does Auburn have to do to bridge the gap between Alabama and Georgia? You got to get better up front. All Absolutely. the other stuff are just ornaments on the tree. That's it. And when I look at Colorado, look, I like Jordan Seaton, but he's also a freshman. He's a I don't true know freshman. How, I don't know he's how much. Guy. Yeah, and Tom, I don't know how much better Colorado is going to be up front on either side of the ball. And you're now what the you? hunted. You're the only team that won less than half of their games that is now the hunted because you talk the talk. And listen, yep. I think Colorado in prime, and it was last year at the beginning, could be a great catalyst for college football to bring in even new members of the audience. I mean, you saw all these celebrities and everybody show up. Mm -hmm. But if you're not good up front and you've talked the talk, it can go downhill very, very quickly. That's my concern for Colorado. Shadur yeah. is better than what I thought he was going to be. Way, him and Graham Mertz were way better than what I thought they were going to be last year, and they do it two different mm -hmm. ways. But if they're not better up front, I'm telling you this. It won't matter. North, North Dakota State is going to come down here with those yep. polar ginger-haired polar bears and rip them <laughs> to shreds up front. Like Dude, it's just, I saw that game on the schedule. I said, it's, oh, that's not a good no. matchup. That's it not a good matchup a good for Colorado. Matchup. So it is that, not a good that's, matchup. That, that, that's my thing. That's my thing, Mike. What's up, everybody? Hey, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't, we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the show. It helps out. Uh, please turn that notification bell on as well. We really appreciate you guys. The Booster Club is elite.